I'm going to try not to talk too much today. It's pretty much the most ironic thing I could do on a panel like this. Um, but we do have a lot that we want to get right into, and uh, too much, really, unfortunately, more than we wanted to. Um, basically, uh, there are supposed to be five of us up here, and there are four. And the reason there are four is because uh, the amazing uh, Lindsay Kirkham, who's supposed to be joining us up here, um, has been getting some anonymous threats uh, over the past few weeks, uh, which started up again uh, last night. So instead of being here, uh, she's at a police station. And that's something that, uh, with her permission, um, we wanted to address. And, uh, you know, we spent, uh, we had all these plans going into this panel, what we were going to talk about. And just as this news broke, um, the, uh, my fellow panelists here jumped right into the discussion, just sharing their feelings, and did what I think would make a great like first 15 minutes for this discussion. So I'd just like to throw that open. Like how I like I know myself from having been there, but how does this news affect you? How are we all feeling right now about this very real thing that's unfolding right now? I'm gonna fight everybody in the entire goddamn world. <laughs> I swear to Christ. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so mad right now. I don't even know what to do. So if somebody maybe slightly more articulate than me could start, that would be super. I can jump in. I mean, I, I think that this is, this is you know the worst thing that I that we can imagine would have happened coming into it, and you just wish that you would feel surprised when something like this happens, and yet you just are like, oh, okay. Um, before we even knew our conversation, but before we um, came to stage, before you arrived, before we found this out, was about this sort of shared feeling of anxiety that we all have at all times being remotely public, whether it's a Twitter persona, whether it's launching a project in public space. And so much of it does have to do with the fact that we are in this tech world, that we are commenting on digital culture, on you know robots, on video games, and that we are women. And, I, and that anxiety comes from the fact that we are women on the internet. And unfortunately, um, it just makes you feel like you're always a target. The analogy that I was using before is that it makes you, in some ways, always feel like your wallet's been stolen, like you're vulnerable in some way. And I think for the three of us, we're really strong. You know, we are strong and, and powerful and kind of can fight anything. I share the mentality of like, bring it, right? We will fight and we will pr protect each other and have each other's backs. Um, but I think that there is this, you know, it's and it's amazing when you feel that other people have that same experience, but that kind of feeling of anxiety, that feeling of constant vibration, that you're just, you know, every Twitter notification, anything that comes in, um, that you're kind of always watching out for yourself. And uh, it's always like you're, al it's always like being on a dark street, right? I would echo a lot of that. And I think what's happened this morning is another example of what we face every single day. Um, often, a lot of the things that we highlight as challenges and barriers for ourselves are met with disbelief. There's a sense of, well, maybe it's like a couple of guys somewhere, you know, who do this kind of stuff. They troll or just ignore them. Or it's somewhere over there happening to Anita who, and it's far away. What we don't realize is for the women in this sector, this is an everyday thing. It ranges from microaggressions when we go to work to little things that are sexist and uh, result in us not getting the same credibility or assignments or exposure to things like this where we're just coming here to talk to people who are voluntarily here to discuss and try and understand how can we make this better and somebody or some people have taken one of us and said, I'm going to target you and threaten you to the point where you can't even think that it's safe to get out of your house. This is real people. And that's one of the biggest challenges and the most exhausting thing that I think we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is trying to prove that the threats are real. They're real. And I don't know what a lot of the naysayers or willfully ignorant people are waiting for to happen and then say, oh, this was the litmus that we needed. Now we will look at this and address it as a group and not just women against this. I think now, there's, oh, sorry. Now we'll believe you, yeah. right? Oh, now we'll believe you. I think there's also this, um, this sense, I've been getting this lately, especially that 
um, somehow the idea, like that we've reached some kind of critical mass when it comes to um, women in tech or it's sort of, sort of awareness of the, the sort of levels of harassment that a lot of women in tech face. And so it's over now. Um, it's stopped, it stopped happening because we're aware of it. Um, I had a colleague recently contact me um, to ask if he could get, uh, if we could have a discussion about like living in a post Gamergate world. And I'm like, P post? Was there, there was a memo like that I missed. <laughs> there, was some, there was some sort of a mailing list I was not signed up for. Um, I didn't realize it, w they stopped. Like they I, all I, turned I, into puppies and unicorns. Oh, in the end, yeah, unicorns and flew away. Um, because my <laughs> mentions are still terrible, <laughs> right? Like some, I, I think that, that somebody missed, somebody missed that. That there's, that there's a sense that, there seems to be a sense that there was a flashpoint, a whole bunch of terrible things happened and we're kind of getting past it now where that, that's sort of the perception where this is, this is steadily something that's happening constantly all the time and people are maybe getting a little bit tired of hearing about it but that didn't mean it wasn't happening before and it sure doesn't mean it's not happening right now. So an interesting thing that I learned recently, in 1976, McKinsey published a report um, in which they stated, it is senseless to continue skills training for women uh, in order to give them jobs that they are already overqualified for and not getting because there is discrimination in the system. 1976. And in that report it says, there is a bizarre sort of complacency in thinking that now that the business world kind of knows that the attitudes towards women as talent are different, it will now somehow resolve itself. 40 years later, we're still seeing that. So there is something deeply broken about what we say we are doing and what we're doing. Just because we have policies in place and there are HR manuals that say we are an equal opportunity employer and we do not discriminate does not mean that that's how the lived experience is. And I think that brings us to the point of not looking at the people who are saying that things are different and believing them. I think that's what's broken because there's all kinds of measures out there that on paper look legit and perfect, but that's not what we are facing every day. So something's missing there and well, we need to talk about it. it I mean, it's, it's ac action and execution. You can have as many harassment policies as you'd like. You can have like, you know, you can have a fantastic, um, any con, any workplace, mm -hmm. any, any event series can have amazing, amazing harassment policies that have been written really beautifully. But what happens when someone terrible goes? And, and what happens when somebody feels unsafe? What happens when harassment occurs is what's so much more crucial um, than, than having any sort of policy is how is that policy is executed and I think what we're seeing over and over again is that they're just not. Mm. You were saying something about... <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, as you were speaking, I think one of the things that is worth remarking on, especially in the context of this conversation, because we're here and it's very easy, it's very easy for me to kind of stumble into this, okay, I'm amongst the tribe. I'm amongst the women who think like me and act like me and know what I kind of go through and feel on a daily basis. And again, another thing that right before we took the stage was just how incredible this audience is. Almost what a surprise it is. Even though it is called What Makes a Man, as I came in, just seeing all of these men was like, wow, this is pretty <laughs> neat. Um, and I, and I, I, I think just the more we can kind of gear our conversation towards that and sort of towards our experiences and maybe towards kind of what next steps need to be taken what you know for the people mm -hmm. who are here who who want to take those next steps because i think that you know as much as we all are willing to fight we also i have a friend who made the analogy recently knowing that knowing about this kind of constant state of anxiety who made the analogy to the ara and how you know when we back in the 90s when you know there was racist action or, or race you know uh, any kind of anything that was done that there was people who would say you know we will show up on their doorsteps and say we don't stand for this and i think that that's what we need from our male friends and male colleagues male partners is just that kind of knowledge in the back of your mind that you guys as part of the community have our backs that you don't stand for it that you don't if you hear something that you won't accept it that you will challenge the status quo mm -hmm. um, and that when you find out that these things are happening whether it's in person whether it's on Twitter 
um, that we know that, we've, that you've got our back because it is exhausting. I think that there is this shared sense of exhaustion and we need to know that, that people, we need to sort of like have some moment where we're not always on edge, on alert. Well, what does it mean um, from that perspective to have your back in that sense? Like we, if, we're, if we're talking about how pervasive these things are, mm -hmm. that they're not just happening in the workplace and they're not just happening in academia, they're happening online, they're on your phone, wherever you go, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. The plus side of that, if it can be said to be a plus side, is that as men, as young men in particular, we don't have to be working at these companies or attending these schools or anything like that to be present there and to speak up. Like this mm -hmm. is just happening in the online spaces where we kill time and where we learn from one another. So if like I'm a guy following you guys on Twitter and I see that these things are happening, um, like obviously we're gonna wanna have your back. Many of us here are, many of us uh, do try our best, but what does that mean? Like can we spell out for example, what that might entail from our point of view? I want to take it one step back because I think one of the key things that we kind of just skipped over in this whole narrative of allies is we don't make room for people to be able to say, you know what, I know some things now that I didn't know before and I've changed my mind. I don't think we make space for that. So a lot of people who are witnesses to things like that see and feel that it's wrong, but there is no space where they can say, yes, I used to be one of those people and I'm learning and I'm not perfect. I don't think we do that for each other and men don't do that for each other. I think there's this sense of your manhood depends on a value set that you were fucking born with and <laughs> you will die on, yeah. like that will be the hill, <laughs> right? And we don't make space for people to be able to say, Things are not how I was taught or how I was told. So I think that needs to be a critical step in the spaces where there are just guys and say, hey, isn't that unfair? And for other people to just nod, just fucking start with nodding. Like yeah. it's not complicated, right? I think we need to do that because if we don't, people who know that this is unfair are afraid to step out because there is a social capital cost to them. And we get that. But please remember, the social capital cost to you is much smaller than people who are living these lives. And these are not just women. These are people who are perhaps genderqueer. These are people who live with varying abilities. These are people of color. It's so important to recognize that these barriers are not unique just because you were born a woman or are tagged with that. This is much bigger. And I think for better or for worse, the truth is, you know, I find this with my female colleagues at the university and you sort of, I think it's universal that we talk about it and you hear, um, but when a man talks about these issues, people go, oh my God, wow, this must be really hitting a, a, break, a turning well, point. it's real now. Point. And right. it, it's, it's just, you know, they're not the way, it, this is our issue, right? So this is an issue that, oh, it's, it's, you know, her issue, just the way she likes pie almost, right? It's like just part of her identity. It's right. part of what she stands for. It's part of what she fights for. And I think when you hear someone who, you know, maybe isn't that kind of immediate stakeholder in a cause speak up, and so that's another, that's another one of those ways. It's just other people will listen to, to a man about these issues that need more awareness that need more voices. I think it's also important to be aware of varying levels of risk and sort of what you're what you're asking um, what you're asking somebody to do when we say things like um, I need support in this mm -hmm. situation or you know I need to feel that you have my back right like like to understand that when um, women are constantly being asked to have these conversations amongst themselves or for each other everybody is assuming a colossal amount of risk in doing so. Uh, and that in a lot of cases, um, for some men, that risk is less or different. Um, and that, and, or, whereas for some people it is more. Um, or, or to, so to evaluate your own sense of safety and your own sense of risk. And I, I also want to allow for the place to say that like, if you don't feel comfortable leaping in in a public conversation or a public forum, like some of the most heartening, 
and you know and and energy giving and encouraging things that have ever messages I've ever received is like somebody sending me a private message mm -hmm. or texting me or just saying like I you were awesome I just thought you should know <laughs> and I can't I don't feel comfortable saying this in public but I want you to know I think you're great and that can change like a whole week in terms of how much how much energy I have to continue doing my actual job mm -hmm. and it doesn't even need to be I would go even further and say it doesn't even need to be proactive in that way. It can be reactive. This is another thing we were talking about, but sort of to step back from the kind of mentality, this base mentality of always making us prove it. Prove that you know what you're talking about. Prove that you've got the skills. Prove that you know tech. Prove that, like, prove it, prove it, prove it. I think that's another reason that we get exhausted. I feel like I've been proving it for 15 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, at, at, as every year goes by and as every project that you do, people are kind of like, you know, really, come on, like, come on. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I think, you know, the e these are sort of as we um, work our way backwards from sort of a level of risk or even level of difficulty, yeah. not even to send that note that says that that's a private DM and says I have your back, but really just not to make us go through the hoop of prove it, but more sort of just I accept that you are assuming I'm in what you say you are. Assuming I'm a, I'm a human being who knows <laughs> what I'm talking about is pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I appreciate it. I think one of the things that perhaps helps in understanding this is at this point, if you're questioning somebody that, you know, on paper has all the credibility that may be required by anyone else, if you're questioning them, that questioning has more to do with you than it does with them. I think it has to do with the fact that you aren't able to articulate that it somehow threatens that this person who's different from you in any way, they're a different race, they're a different gender, they speak, talk differently than you, it, that threatens you. And I think if we actually step back and say, okay, maybe that's what's at the, the base of us feeling like an other and going into these spaces and saying, you don't belong here, that's what's informing it, it changes it. And I think we need to be able to say that. All of you here have made the decision to come here and engage in a difficult, difficult conversation. And we all realize that because for each one of you here, there are five people who want to be here but aren't able to make that decision because they think that the risk is too much. And I think we need to be able to allow that just because people are different does not mean that they should be made to jump through hoops. Because one of the things that we were talking about was it still baffles me that there is so much rhetoric around how we don't belong in these spaces where all we are asking for is let us do our work. We're not asking for something to be given to us that is yours. We're just saying let us build shit. Let us build things that are yeah. useful and good and amazing yeah. and we will all like it. Let's just allow us to do that. Is that too much to ask? So I have a funny story that I think um, <laughs> like shows just how <laughs> crazy this can get. Um, so I had an interview scheduled with Ray Kurzweil, who, you know, as far as tech goes, this was a big interview, and I was really excited, and I'm a big, I'm a fan, and, 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 and I'm going to preface all of this by saying, you know, I've interviewed him a few times, he's always been amazing, and, and you know, a very good rapport. But I was at a, a tech conference, and where everyone was, you know, sort of followers of the singularity and life extension, mm -hmm. and it was very, very male. It was so male that I was in New York, and I think that um, the, maybe the only women who were there were marketing and PR for the event. Yeah. Like male. Um, so I walk in. I had on a press pa a press pass, a press badge, and my name is Ramona, and I just kept noticing this weird, like, look at me, look at my badge, look at me. Look at my badge, and this I, I will again. I'm, I'm also I I I I'm very I want to be very careful in, in sort of how I set this story up because it wasn't I was being kind of looked over. That wasn't the issue. No, it was more like, huh 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 huh, mm -hmm. and it happened over and over and over. And one person goes, well, you're you're not the Ramona, are you? And I was like, do they know who I am? You know, like this was like, and and this this like this went on probably half a dozen times. It was weird, eerie weird. Finally, Jason Silva, the tech. Mm -hmm. Futurist? YouTuber, yeah. futurist, came up to me and explained what was going on with 
you're not the Ramon, I think he might have even repeated it. Well, so Ray Kurzweil has been developing this AI robot, and her name happens to be Ramona. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> right, so you guys know exactly how this yeah. story ends. So we're in this, so we're at this it's event where it is, thank you, you yeah. took the words out of it's my mouth. It was more robot. believable that I was like this prototype <laughs> walking around the space. <laughs> than that I was there because I had an interview <laughs> booked with the keynote speaker. So, it's a funny one. That's good. That's yeah. good. Well, where do you go from there? <laughs>